Good morning, everybody. Yeah, good morning. It's nice. It's nice to see you all. Thank you for coming out today. It's nice to see you. I hope you had a lovely day yesterday. I hope things went well. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask and pray that you will make our souls and our hearts and our minds to be still. Dear Heavenly Father, when we think of being still, we think of all the things that we have to try and do. But Heavenly Father, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by your spirit all things are done. All good things come from you. You are a God of peace. And the word be still, know that I'm God, comes from your awesomeness, comes from knowing you. If we know who you are and your glory and your wonders and your creation, surely will not that bring us peace to be still? But Lord, you know us in this earthly way of how busy life can be. Lord, we come today in your sanctuary. We come to declare today is your Sabbath or even take time without things around us with which are the struggles of this world. Heavenly Father, may today we enter into your peace. Whatever is going, Lord, you offered us peace past all understanding. You are the creator of all good things. So, Lord, we don't live by sight. If we did, we would be kicking and screaming. And, Lord, we do at times. Help us, Lord, to live by faith, by surrendering everything that is a toll and a strain right now, maybe financially, maybe relationships. May we just offer everything again, once again to you, continually give everything as a sacrifice. Again, a beginning of our worship to say, here I am, Lord, holy and available. Take what I am and mold me and make me. And I'm so glad we can all declare your promises knowing that you're a God who knows us. Our frame was not hidden. That you promised us good things. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we know you have the plans for us. Plans to prosper, not to harm us. So, Lord, you are a good, good God. That's who you are. So I just pray for your Holy Spirit now to bring peace, which passes all of our situations, all of our worries, because we cast our burdens unto the Lord. And we want your yoke, which your yoke is light. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to start with our news and notes today. We've got a few news and notes. Again, if you are new to this church, um, or you'll be watching later on, our news and notes normally are sent out to an email if you belong to, if you want to sign up. And we also have a sheet. It's all on there. Most of the activity I'm not going to go through are going to be in your, uh, in your uh, list. If you don't know what they are, please come and see me. I don't want to just keep going through because most of it is actually there. Most of it I can see at the moment should know what activities we do. I just want to share to you yesterday, uh, the leadership uh, team went away. We had a, a way day. And like every good leadership team, you always want to know what is God's vision or mission. And I'm going to quickly ask you, what do you think God's, and leadership, don't give it away, <laughs> what do you think God's mission or vision is for the church today? What would you think it is going to be today? And I'll really make it easy. It's quite simple. What do you think the mission and vision of church should be? Let's keep it simple. Some of you may be thinking, hmm, theology. And let's keep it simple. What do you think we, as a body, should be doing? Worshipping God, good. Evangelizing. Evangelizing. What else What else should we be doing? So evangelism says worshipping God, evangelism. And when you evangelize, what else should we be doing with evangelism? Being a good example. And you can always use that as discipleship. Everything basically you said is what really we did. It was really going back to the basis, go and preach the world, and disciple them. 
and that is nothing new. Sometimes we may think, wow, we're going to go, and what's God got something new? Maybe what God's got something new for us is maybe the strategy of how to get there. But God's mission never changes. And we as a leadership had a lot to unravel, so we're still thinking and praying to know what to do next. So, but really the mission hasn't changed, it will never change, is to build his church, and we are church, just to build his church. I just want to give you some uh, pictures of the away day. I just want to just show you some pictures. We had yesterday, uh, again, every <laughs> every good fellowship has to st- usually starts with a belly, doesn't it? And then it works away. So yes, we had a good food. What happened yesterday, we had a, it really worked out well. We had a woman's breakfast yesterday, if you, if you came. And then also there was a men's breakfast where we were going to hold the away day and went early. So us men went first to the men's day. So that was like bright and early. We left here at 7.30 and got there by 8.30. And then the women had stairs, and we said we'd come together later. So that was lovely. So then, so that was our, our breakfast. And this is up in Epping. Uh, where was the next slide? Where are we? And this is the hall we ate, which was lovely. It was really, really nice. This is in Mulberry House in Epping. If you've not heard of it, I know uh, people have gone, said they really enjoyed it. It was Nikki. And so if you want to talk and ask more about it, it's a lovely place to go. Lovely place to go. Um, where are we? Other ones. This was called Mulberry House itself. Uh, this is where we, there was another building where we had our breakfast. This is where we actually spent the whole day uh, actually listening to what God has t- really strategy of how to do God's mission. And some of you may know this gentleman or may not. This gentleman is called John Jenkins, and he's basically in the Hara Church, and he basically, I would say, is a I wouldn't say bishop because we don't do bishops here, but I dist- what would you say the best you could say, of pa- uh, Phil? Would you know? Mm-hmm. Or the, one of the elders, are, we, are, we belong to uh, Evangelical Alliance, we belong, and he basically sort of... Partnerships. Partnerships. Thank you, that's it, the partnership we belong to. He looks after the, the certain branch, so thank you. Priscilla, there you go. I couldn't say it better. Thank you very much. So, so, so he's somewhere local, and it was nice he came, and his background is in church planting. We heard his whole background, he's done church planting, and he was just giving us some good strategic ways of how to share the gospel. And it was fantastic. And then this is again, just us again, all. I was obviously, I was there, but obviously taking pictures there. The other one's studying really hard. Look at them all, really studying hard. And again, therefore go and make disciples to all nations, baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Please watch this space because we now as a leadership are going to be coming together, praying to what we've got and how now do we implement this in a church. The nice thing as well is the, the Hara Church, which is going to have the baptism later, they kind of had the same teaching uh, about evangelism as we did. So who knows, maybe we can incorporate and work with them as well and go to the streets and go to the neighborhood, which Kenny's been doing already and joining him and it would be really nice, and we can start fishing fishing for men and women coming to this church. Because what was really sad yesterday, we and if my numbers are wrong, let me know, but they were basically saying that 95%, is that correct, don't know Christ? And they said, if we're using that, it was obviously statistics, they were saying this neighborhood is 16,000 people. I'm just, again, just uh, putting it to, I know there's much more if you're into numbers, and they're saying roughly about 15,000 people don't know Christ. They were saying that statistically, to get a movement, you need 10% of things to happen. So 10% to happen, again, I'm just throwing numbers, we all know God can do all this, but just to let you know, the crisis we're in, we almost need 24 new churches at 64 people to get that 10%. Some people may be thinking, that's that's just to start a movement. We know God can change to an instant, but we're just seeing statistics and realizing actually how much the gospel has not been preached or we are not going out and we're not discipling so we we basically teach you more of how to go out and I know for people who are doing things that's great and we want to join you and start bringing people in we as a church starting going into the land of 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 South Rice going out and bringing people we've been very blessed people coming here but I think we need as a church some of us need to go out and start bringing people into this church and not just waiting for them to come in. This building should be, and I hope you agree, it'd be lovely if this building is filled with God's people and God's glory shall fill the earth. Okay, so let us just pray for that. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you 
again for all what you are doing, all what has been done, all the evangelism that has been done in this church. We would not be here for all the people in the past who have brought people, even brought us. Lord, we thank you for the people who've discipled us with our Sunday schools, with all the different uh, teachings that's been here. But Heavenly Father, we look around and we hear the numbers and statistics. And Lord, we want more of your people to fill the earth of your glory. Dear Heavenly Father, may we have that first love that you've given us to share our stories, to have that boldness to know fear. Put people in our hearts that we can share the gospel to. We can bring them here. And not only when they come here, help us to know how we can disciple them to then disciple others. Because Heavenly Father, we all know the harvest is plentiful, but we also know, Lord, that the leaders are lacking. The workers are lacking. So, Lord, we need more workers. So help us as workers and help others, Lord, to become workers, to be fishermen of men. Lord, we pray that you're, by your spirit, you will do all this. We know it's by your spirit. Your ways, Lord, are not our ways. So, Holy Spirit, start to prompt us, start to encourage us. Give us, Heavenly Father, your God's mission of evangelism. We pray with all in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have any uh, celebrations today? Any uh, celebrations? Birthdays? No birthdays? No anniversaries? Any birthdays or celebrations? No. Is there any news you would like to share the congregation? Any good news? Yes. James, you're sure of it? I like that. I'm sure it's my son's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm sure it's my son's birthday. Well, how old are you, James, on the next one? 23, sorry, James 23. Yes, James 23. So, James, wherever you are right now, happy birthday for Thursday. Well done. Any other birthdays? Or, uh, not birthdays, sorry. Any other news? Do apologize. Yes. Wow, there is some multiplication coaching going on in your family. In your family. That's fantastic. That is amazing. Anything else? Oh, happy birthday, Nina. Oh, happy birthday. If they didn't, that's okay. That's nice to do it. Happy birthday, Nina. Happy birthday. Any more celebrations before we go and just we pray? Dear Lord, we just thank you for all these celebrations. We thank you for these birthdays, Heavenly Father, that you have ordained, you've created, Lord. And Lord, when you created, you said it was good and you were well pleased. So Heavenly Father, may they feel well pleased on their birthday and may they have a fantastic time. And Lord, we thank you for not only for births, Lord, birthdays, we thank you for births, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for these um, pregnancies we've heard and, these, and again, these new babies coming into existence. Heavenly Father, we pray for protection. We pray for all the provision. We pray for that you'll provide when they come. We pray for patience. Almost all these Ps. We pray for patience, Heavenly Father. And we just pray, Lord, you'll protect them. So, Lord, protect those, Lord, who are waiting for their children to arrive in anticipation and may you give them that perfect peace that does pass all understanding. Give them peace, Heavenly Father, as all these mothers, Lord, are carrying these wonderful children, Heavenly Father. So be with them. And we just give you, God, give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Should we stand? We can sing the battle belongs to the Lord.
when all I see is a battle, you see the victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see the mountain blue. As I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I'm saying to you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands in the heart. Oh, that the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, cause I'll sing through the night. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Yeah. For Jesus says nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Almighty fortress, oh my fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees. The battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, not see through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs so to you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, cause I'll see through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Never fear, I lay at your feet, cause I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Verse 28 to 31. It says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint, 
neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding, for he gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. We're going to sing strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. And that's the key. If you are lacking strength, the answer is to wait upon the Lord. And he promises he will renew your strength. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God. Our God. You reign forever. Our hope. Our strong. You are the everlasting. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not make you old. You are the everlasting. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not make you old. No weary. You're the defender of the weak. You conquer those in me. You lift us up for.
that's what we know. I think the um, children can go out. Young people are going to go out a bit later, but I think the children can go out. Normally in Madison Prayer, what we normally do, as you know, we ask requests and we pray from here. I actually want to spend maybe just five, sort of six minutes with you guys praying for each other or praying for what's on your hearts. So what I want you to do is, I know it seems like a lot of people over here, but just get at least three of you together. Try and find someone you don't know. It's a nice thing to do. This may be a time where you may not know who they are and they may pray for family. Nothing is off bounds for the Lord. If he is the creator of heaven and earth, he actually knows you anyway. And we're two or three in agreement. Again, it's agreeing what you're doing and they're helping you alongside giving the prayers to God. And it's a powerful prayer. A righteous prayer is a powerful prayer. We are righteous in Christ. Through Christ, we are righteous. And sometimes it's, it's nice to help a brother or sister. They may need help, support, say, pray for me. And you may have wisdom. And we're a great believer. You may even have words from God. God does actually speak to his people that you may actually have something for them. Or you could be the solution. You could be praying and then all of a sudden, actually, let me talk to you later. You could be the solution. So I would like us now to spend some time together. Just quickly move, if you can, about at least three of you, three to four to five, and spend about five, six minutes praying for each other. Nations, it can be locally, it can be personally. So let's get together, make some circles, whatever's best for you, and let's start to praying.
just give you a couple more minutes to wind down your prayers. We can always continue this later on as well. I just want to remind you that the song that we sung today, the battle belongs to the Lord. In probably times like this, and probably some of the, I know the stuff we heard, some of the stuff you sometimes hear when you're praying, it can be, oh God, oh God, where are you? And God does have a plan. We don't live by sight, but yet it is hard what we see and what we hear today. What we heard, what we heard in our group is, 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 yeah, we just cannot imagine. So we just pray that we can realize the battle and the vengeance belongs to you. That you are the one who judges. And you do judge. That is one hope we can hope for, that you judge the guilty. You will condemn what they have done. Dear Heavenly Father, you ask us not to strife. It is not our battle. But Lord, it is so hard sometimes because it's so close to our hearts, some of these things. We've got to hang on to where you said you give us that peace that passes all understanding. We may ask why, but you said your yoke is light. You want us to be light. You want, you are the creator of the world, not us. You want us to live in peace. And as a good, good father, that's who you are. You're almost saying, I will do it my way. It will be done. There will be a day where we can all rejoice and say, it will be done. No more mourning, no more wars, no more pain. But your full glory. Heavenly Father, sometimes all the prayers we heard or what we're praying for, we wish that would come soon. So Heavenly Father, help us to be persistent. Help us to look at the crown, the victorious crown. And Lord, as we've done today, help us never to forget the innocent, the lowly, who you like to lift up, who you bless. So Heavenly Father, when we listen to the prayers, we want to say thank you for what we have. Thank you for what we have. Thank you for this building. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for our family. Thank you that most of us here do have still food on the tables. So we can say in our hearts, it is well with us. It is well. And Lord, as we mourn for others, we still have to hang on to, we thank you for what we have. And help us not to forget the less fortunate and maybe, Lord, if it's your will and your plan that we can do something by your spirit, help us individually, help us as a church. But we know no prayer is wasted as when you went to the Israelites and you said, I heard their cry. I heard their cry. So, Lord, we know that you hear our cry today. Just give us that faith to know your time is perfect. Your will is perfect. And we give you all the glory and all the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, as we uh, come to a time of worship, so there's not... Looking around, there's you know, many people away today. It's numbers are quite small, <coughs> which means it can be um, sometimes more intimate. And um, I just want to share something about worship to encourage you and encourage myself. Um, we read that scripture earlier about those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up as wings like eagles. 
like eagles. And the way that the eagle flies, he goes up to the top of a mountain and he waits for the wind. Because eagles don't flap their wings. They soar. What do they saw when they saw on the wind, they saw on the current. And that is really what worship is. Worship is waiting on the Lord. And if, you know, as human beings, we're impatient. We are. We want things now. You know, we, 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 everything is instant. Instagram. You know, you put your money into a vending machine and the, f- and the food comes out straight away. We have microwaves now. We don't want to wait for the roast to take time. We want it instantly. And that's sometimes that can creep into our relationship with God. And also when we're worshiping God, it creeps in. We're trying to hurry God up. But we just read, wait. Those who wait upon the Lord. It says in Acts chapter 1, Jesus said to the disciples, um, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. If we're not willing to wait for the promise, if we're not willing to wait on God, then we're not going to see the fulfillment of the promise. And there's a scripture that says, do not be hasty to leave the presence of the king. Do not be hasty to leave the presence of the king. Why are we in a rush? You know, the business of life, you know, this responsibility, that responsibility, I need to do this quickly, I need to, and we just, we've lost the art of waiting upon God. The Bible says, the wind blows where it wants And though you hear the sound, yet you do not know where it comes from or where it's going. So my style of worship, you may not be used to my style of worship. Everyone has their different styles. And uh, I just want to encourage you. So even if you're not used to this style, I just want to encourage you to focus on the Lord. Don't focus at the people people leading. Don't focus on yourself. Don't focus on your clock. We need to focus on the Lord because he's the one whom we're worshiping. Psalm 27 says, One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. And that's all we're doing. You may say, so why do you, you may ask me, why do you sing the same song over and over and over again? Well, I read a scripture in the book of Revelations, and it says that the, f- the four living creatures say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, day and night. They never cease. They keep repeating it. And sometimes you're so in awe of the presence of God that you just repeat it, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So if the style that, w- that I worship, the way that I lead worship, this is just, who I'm just being who I am. Um, I'm just asking you to sort of maybe put that aside it might not be your style, but as we're all, there's, we're two or three gathered together. There's only a few of us. Let's just enter into a time of intimacy. Let's not look at me. Let's not look at the kids. Let's not look at ourselves. Let's not look at the clock. But let's look at the one who is worthy, and that is Jesus. And let's wait for the wind of his spirit. Because when the wind comes, we don't know where it's going to take us. I don't know where we're going to go. Father, in Jesus' name, we just want to wait upon you. Just We want to be intimate with you, Lord God. There may be some in here today who feel far away from you, who have not sensed your presence, who have not felt your touch. And I pray that they will feel your touch right now. That they will open their heart. And that they will hunger for you, for your presence, Lord. Because that's why we're worshiping. It's not a show. It's not entertainment, Lord God, but it is to glorify the one who is worthy because in the days that we're living in, we need to keep our eyes focused on you because it's dark out there and we need to keep our eyes focused on the light. So we welcome your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place to help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. You can, however you feel comfortable, stand, sit, Neil, however you feel comfortable, we're going to sing thank you for the cross.
Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love. Worthy is the Lamb. 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 
is right. Oh, I want is for 
Fill my life. This morning we are going to be talking about hope. And we're going to be reading from Romans 15. Our main verse is going to be Romans 13. But I want us to start our reading from verses 11. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, let all people extol him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will rise to rule over the nations. And in him, the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill your heart with all joy, peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. 
one would wonder why must I talk about hope in such a time as this you will all agree that we cannot as the church of Christ we cannot afford to not talk about hope because Jesus Christ is our hope as we have our hope in him we are also bound to proclaim this hope to the people to the world around us reason is is that you need hope your children need this hope your family friends and the neighbors around you they need hope at large so this is the fundamental reason why at such a time we need to talk about hope and as we talk about hope the conceptions out in the world when we talk about hope and these conceptions kind of like you take it at first value you'll be confused because there are some misconceptions about hope and i want to mention some of those what biblical hope is not is it working Yes, please. So that when the Bible talks about hope, it is not talking about wishful thinking. Many people may say, I hope, when actually what they really mean is I wish. <laughs> so that is not the kind of hope that I'm talking about today. This hope is not a gamble when people predict the occurrence of something. It is not about one's personality trait where one is optimistic. That is not the kind of hope I am talking about. Therefore, let us look at what biblical hope means. And we can only trace that from the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament uses Hebrew verbs that may in certain context be translated to hope in English. And the whole idea in the Old Testament is trust into something trust into something in <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 14 verses 22 we read these words this is what Jeremiah says do any of the worthless idols of the nations bring rain do the skies themselves send down showers? No, it is you, Lord, our God. Therefore, our hope is in you, for you are the one who does all these. Therefore, our hope is in you, God. And what the Old Testament is bringing about that God's people were encouraged to wait on God hopefully and expectantly. Especially in times of trouble, one should wait upon the Lord. And certainly this help, this hope that we talk about will turn things around 
because it is into something. It is into God himself. So as we wait on God, certainly God will turn things around. He who does will not be ashamed, will not be disappointed. And this is the whole argument, the whole discussion about hope. In Psalms 69 verses 6, may those who hope in you do not be disgraced. Those who put their trust in God, those who are hoping God will not be let down. So it is certain that God will come through for those that have put their trust in him. And when we come to the New Testament, it consistently uses the verb in a Greek word, elpizo, and the noun elpis, that means it means to wait for salvation with joy, full confidence and anticipation, looking forward to something. As Jeremiah proclaims that God is the hope of Israel, Paul announces that Jesus Christ is our hope as believers in Christ Jesus. Therefore, the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament is the expression of hope. The idea is to, act, to eagerly wait for God to come through. What hope is is the confident expression of the future reality of God's blessings that will come best upon his manifestation of the activities of God, what God is doing. He's promised God is doing. He's going to come as you wait. God certainly will come through. Because it is, his, it is in his nature, it is his doing, he is working out even when I am not seeing, I am not so sure of what God has for me tomorrow or in the next hour. But I know that his focus is on me. So even though I do not know, God is working. Biblical hope becomes possible when there is a belief in the living God who acts and intervenes in the human life. That is why we pray. When we say we are going to pray, we are not doing it just for the sake of praying as a ritual. No. We are, we know that God intervenes in human affairs. God intervenes in our day-to-day -day challenges. And that is why we go to him in prayer. Prayer, in other words, is a trust in the working of God. That I cannot do, I cannot be able to do that. I cannot be able to handle what is ahead of me. So what I will do, I will yield I will pray, I will surrender, and let God intervene on my behalf. And this morning, we will look at only two points. One is we're going to focus on the source and the fruit of this abundant hope. The source of the abundant hope is God. The scripture that we re we've read in Romans, God of hope, 
what Paul is saying that God is the source and the giver of hope. Hope is also the object that God is also the object of our hope. Psalms 62 verses 5, because my soul finds rest in God, my hope comes from him. In other words, if you lack hope, the first place to look for, it is God, because he is the source of of hope. In Luke 11, Jesus knocked, Jesus says these words, that knock on the door like a friend asking for bread amidst the night until he gives it. So when we pray, you are going to God because he is the one you ask, he gives. God gives because he is the owner of what you are asking for. He's the owner, he's the giver of this hope. The word hope in verses 13 that we've, re we've read links back with the hope in verses 12. And that is Isaiah 11. says the root of Jesse will spring up one who will arise to rule over the nation. In him shall Gentiles hope. Him refers to Jesus Christ and the promise of salvation will come through. It means that if you do not come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and put your trust in him as your only hope for eternal life, then you have no hope. And you are without God who is the source of help. Therefore, you do well to, keep, to put your trust to believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. And obviously, you will have him as your hope. Romans 5 Paul elaborates on hope through the gospel, and he says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into grace in which we stand. And we exult in hope of glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulations brings about perseverance. And perseverance brings about proven character. And proven character, hope. And this hope does not disappoint because the love of God has, poured, has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, whom is being given unto us. So that confirms that hope, it is not a wishful thinking. If you need a hope, the right person to go to, it is God in prayer. And he gives this hope when you ask. We are to rejoice in hope as we persevere in our day-to-day -day challenges. These tribulations are reflected in form of the temporal trials, temptations, persecutions, illnesses, 
crisis, lack, calamity, oppressions, imprisonment because of your faith in Jesus Christ, miscarriages, insults of any kinds, rejection, less loss or death. It is when life hurts most, when it does hurt most, humbly look to Christ. On the cross, you see Jesus Christ, and that is the beginning of hope. Because he did not stay on the cross, he got off the cross. No matter where you are, you're going to get off that cross that you are at. Whatever the mountain, it might seem to be big, but every time you turn and look at the cross, it's empty. It is empty. So that means whatever you're facing, your life, it is not going to end in defeat. What you're afraid of, what you're going through, that is not the end. Many times as children of God, we tend to make conclusions. You see someone sick, and then you conclude they're going to die. You are wrong. Before God concludes, you shouldn't make a conclusion. What you're called upon to do it is to hope that, yes, things will be better. First John chapter 3, verse 12. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not been appeared as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him, purifies himself just as he is pure. Hope fixed on him. Your eyes fixed on Christ. Amidst of the storm that you are going through, you do better to close your eyes not to look at the storm and you only try to face where is Jesus Christ. And once you trace and your eyes are fixed on Jesus Christ, then that is the beginning of hope coming out of you. And definitely the Holy Spirit will water that. And this hope will grow and grow and grow. Every day will grow. And at the end of the day, you look at the, what was the mountain before you. It is no longer there because hope has become the mountain. What Jesus is saying to you this morning is that put your hope in Christ. And lastly, the fruit of this abundant hope is peace and joy. Paul prays that the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace so that you will abound in hope. Peace and joy, so that you will abound in hope. Romans 14, 17, The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Both joy and peace are listed as part of the fruits that the Holy Spirit produces in the believer who is walking in the Spirit. And in fact, they are often 
most noticed when a person is in a situation where almost everyone would be depressed and anxious when they look at you. But the spirit-filled believer is full of joy and peace. Why? Because they have the source of hope. Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus is the hope, is inside them. The day you said Jesus Christ, you welcome the hope inside you. Philippians 4 says, do not be anxious, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thus, when we talk of joy, Joy is the inner delight in God and his sure promises that God gives us, that gives us comfort and contentment in every challenge that we face. It comes from knowing that the sovereign God will work all things for your good. And peace is the inner contentment and freedom from the crippling anxiety and fear that comes from being reconciled with God. Once you know that your relationship with God has been, has, has been mended, that, is the, 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 that, is, th that means that you have hope inside of you. There is no point why should they, uh, most of the time we turn to pray for peace in the nations. But I'm telling you, yes, we'll pray and God out of his mass will avail this peace. But I'm telling you, only true peace comes when you've got your relationship mended with him. When you know you are in the right relationship. I remember a time when I was a child, and in most cases, if, if like you've done something wrong, you tend to avoid your parents, your mama. You know, you turn, when she's kind of like seated somewhere, you tend to go the other way. And one time I remember, in most cases, when my mom, my mom would spank us, you know, and uh, when you do something wrong and she's, She's determined she's going to spank you. And you run and hide. And when she's here, then you are the other side. When she's in front of this door, you're behind. And one time, if she really wants to catch you, then she will send you for something. Go and bring me a cup of water to drink. And now you know, I think now I'm in trouble. You know, I'm in trouble. And of course, you come with the cup of water. In most cases, she receives the cup and gets hold of your hand. And you have nowhere to go. You know. But for you to feel the, the, the warmth, to enjoy home, there has to be a good relationship when it's flowing between you and your parents. <laughs> Your mom talks to you, you are fine with them. Everything, the relationship is flourishing and you are happy that you enter the house, you're not scared. Someone is going to follow you and catch you within the house. Why? Because there is a right relationship. So even as we pray for nations, we pray there will be peace. There will never be total peace until nations receive Jesus in their hearts. Because that is the beginning of true peace. In the world, 
we live, it is filled with anguish, loneliness, pains, wars, sicknesses, sorrows, persecution, death among others. And one would think that peace is impossible to find. No. Now I want to tell you a story. There was a king who offered a prize to the artist who would paint the best picture of peace. And the contest stirred up the imaginations of the artists everywhere. Many artists wanted a chance of winning the prize. The paintings from all corner, far and wide, began to arrive. And the king looked at all the pictures that were sent to him uncovering one piece after the other. And onlookers, people that had come to cheer up, had gathered around. So they kept cheering, clapping their hands. He would open one after the other, one after the other. The tension grew as one as only two pictures remained to be unveiled. As the king pulled the cover from one, a hush fell over the ground. It was a picture of a calm lake. The lake was, perfect, was a perfect mirror for a peaceful towering mountains all around it. Overhead was a beautiful blue sky with a fluffy white clouds. Along the grass shores and the flocks of the sheep grazed undisturbed. All who saw this picture thought it was a perfect picture of peace. Surely, this is it, the crowd shouted. The king uncovered the last piece of the painting and the crowd grasped in surprise. Could this be peace? This picture had mountains like the previous painting, but they were rugged and bare. Above was angry sky from which rain fell and in which lightning played, down side of the mountains trembling and forming waterfalls, the crowd could not feel, the, the, the crowd almost felt it cold, penetrating sprays. And indeed, this did not look to be peaceful at all. But when the king looked closely on the picture, he saw a little bird that had built a nest on the branch of a tree. A tree that reached out in the direction of the thunderous waterfalls. Yet there, undisputed, undisturbed in a stormy surroundings, sat a mother bird on her nest. And when the king saw it, he gave the prize to the last painting. And when you look at it, it doesn't look to be peaceful at all. So peace is not the absence of wars, of conflict. We sometimes fail to understand that the everlasting peace of Jesus promises it is that inner peace he provides. It is born in faith you have in him. 
it is anchored by the testimony of what God has been doing in your life. It is nurtured with love. It is expressed through continued obedience and repentance. That is where true peace comes from. And friends, there is no any other way to understand when we talk about peace than in the song, the hymn, It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I don't know whether we have that song. We couldn't find it. All right. We will sing it next week. All right. But I want to give you, to read you some words within the song. Verse 1 says, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like seas be roll, whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. And as I conclude, I want to sing the chorus of that song. And if you know, I want you to join together with me. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I don't know what you're going through today, but one thing that I want to say to echo to you the words of that song, it is well with your soul. Your life will not end the way it is because Christ, who is hope, is in you. And because he's in you, you are anchored on him. Nothing can move you no matter what. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, the one now. Thank you. Please don't leave this building without getting prayer. If, you, if you're feeling, again, not that hope around you, like Moses, he had Aaron, and Aaron lifted his hands up. When his hands were raised, they won the battle. So please, don't feel you're alone. If you want some prayer that you're finding, things are hard, please stay here and have some prayer. If you want some fellowship as well, we have tea. I don't know who's doing tea and coffee today. It may not be there today. So, yeah, if we can as well in the future, we really do need tea and coffee, or we may have to actually stop it at the moment. I'm just, I mean, we're actually running out of uh, people at the moment. So if you're interested, especially for next week, we'll start maybe weekly at the moment. Let me know who can do teas and coffee. That will be great. Okay, let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the perfect hope. And it's not wishful thinking. It's an anchor on you. So Heavenly Father, I just pray as we go in this week, Lord, what comes across us, what things will happen in this world, may we learn to keep looking up 
and knowing of what we sung, it is well with you. If it is well with you, then it is well with us. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you give us peace that passes all understanding. We pray that you keep our minds pure and our minds on you so we will know this perfect peace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.